want to talk to you today about three different birds. These are very special birds. They're kind of my favorites. But there are lots and lots of special things about all other birds. Let's talk about these three today. Penguin is a bird that can live in a lot of different parts of the world. Here's a picture of one kind of penguins. They have some very special features to their bodies. They have flipper type wings. They can just fly underwater, but they can't fly in the air. They have very strong, short legs to help them walk, sometimes long distances. They always have black backs and white bellies. When a penguin is out of the water, the sun coming down, whatever light is coming, is absorbed by his black back, and that helps him get warm. His white belly, when he is in the water, anything that would have him for lunch and is swimming underneath him looking up toward the light would see his white belly, which against the light that's up out of the water helps him to be hidden. So that's a perfect coloring for him. A penguin is covered with small feathers that are coated very lightly with oil, and they overlap each other like a shingle on a roof. There are wispy little strands, again, at the base of each feather that make air pockets that hold in heat. Now, one time I was curious, and I looked at chicken skin to see how many feathers there are in about an inch of skin. And there were only about eight chicken feathers in an inch, square inch of skin. But I found in a magazine information that said that in one square centimeter of penguin skin, there are 29 feathers, which would keep warmer, a chicken or a penguin. In icy weather, a penguin has very dense feathers a very dense concentration of feathers so that he can stay warm no matter what's going on around him. He also has a very thick layer of blubber under his skin that helps provide insulation too. When it's very, very cold, they huddle together to share body heat. And they take turns being on the outside of the huddle. They share heat by massing together and then the penguins from the inside take their turns and get on the outside all around the group so that nobody has to stay out there on the outside edge where it's the coldest. Sometimes when penguins are, are huddling together in the far south, the Antarctic, where penguins live, they can all lie down on the ice because the, when the wind blows across a surface, the surface kind of provides some resistance and the wind slows down a little bit. The wind actually blows a little bit less strongly against the ice. And when the penguins lie down together, the wind goes more over top of the whole group. So penguins are perfectly suited for where they live. They are perfectly suited to get the fish that they need for food, to fly through the water to fish, and their bodies have all of these special parts to help them live where it's so miserable. I also want to show you something about the woodpecker. Here I have a plastic woodpecker. Here I have a picture of a woodpecker. This is from a Ranger Rick magazine. They're not only beautiful, but they are so neat. Woodpeckers have special equipment for drilling into wood. I'll just hold him here and let me hold up this piece of wood that actually has been worked on by a woodpecker. Or maybe some of his cousins along with it. He has special parts of his body that help him drill into wood. He has strong, straight, chisel-like bill 
with a hard horny covering at the tip. His feathers right here grow over his nostrils to keep dust and wood chips from getting into his nose while he's drilling into wood. He has a very thick skull, a strong head and neck muscles, and a broad base to his bill right here to spread the shock of his pounding. His uh, skull is designed kind of like a baseball helmet and protects his brain from the shock of hitting a tree many times a minute. He also has to be able to perch vertically on a tree. See how this guy is doing this? He has a stiff tail to use as a brace that helps balance him while he's there. Incidentally, even when he molts, only part of his tail feathers are changed at a time so that it never interrupts his ability to get food. He always has part of these tail feathers. He has very strong muscles in his legs and feet, and he has two talons pointing forward and two backward so that he can exert tremendous force onto the wood of the tree. He has a very long tongue that not only sticks out quite a distance, but it comes around the back of his head. There's another muscle that goes up inside his skull and around that can stretch and come back in the cartilage so that his tongue can shoot out really far and this whole business can stretch. And then when he gets his lunch, he can pull all of that back in and it will go back to its normal shape. His tongue is so long this way that he can go into two or three branches where there are hollows to get food without having to make a separate hole in each one. How does a woodpecker know when there are bugs inside a tree? He has to be able to hear the bugs moving or feel their movement. There's some way that a, that a woodpecker knows which trees to get into. Sometimes a woodpecker drilling into a tree that has bugs inside it can help the tree. If the bugs inside the tree are doing damage to the tree and the woodpecker drills in and eats those bugs out while the colony is small of ants or whatever, then it will save the tree. That helps us. The eagle is a very great favorite in the United States. And it is a very, very strong, mighty bird. Here is a photograph of an eagle. Can everybody watching give me your best eagle look? They always look angry to me, but they're not. They're just doing their job. Eagles can fly very high, and they're very, very strong in flight. A mighty bird. All kinds of eagles are carnivorous. They eat meat, that's right. And they have to be able to look down from as high as they fly. They have to be able to look down to the earth and see their lunch. Could be a small animal. It could be a fish in water, and they can fly, they can swoop down very, very quickly. Just before they get to their prey, they do a little thing with their wings, and they stick their talons out in front. Their talons have very sharp tips and little barbs in there that help grasp and hold their prey. When they do this in water, I want to show you something that happens. If I stick this pencil into the water, can you see how the denseness of the water refracts or changes the direction of what you see? The pencil looks crooked now when it's in the water. Well, when an eagle is swooping down from a great height at a great speed, his eyes have to be able to see into the water and see not where the fish looks like it is, but where the fish actually is. His eyes can see not only 
very far, eight times as far as our eyes can see. But his eyes have to be able to make up for looking through water. Isn't that neat? So the eagle is a very high flyer. It's a very strong flyer. It's an important part of the food chain. He's at the very top of the food chain. And he also, along with many other kinds of animals, helps control certain populations of other animals. He's a very special bird. Eagles are perfect. Let's read a book, Soaring Eagles, by Charles E. Ford and John Clayton, illustrated by Jerry Miller. Many countries, like the United States, use the eagle as a symbol. Eagles are found all over the world. White-tailed eagles live in northern parts of Europe, Asia, Greenland, and Iceland. Harpy eagles live in Central and South America. There are eagles in the Philippine Islands, Malaya, Australia, and Africa. Golden eagles are found in North America, but the American bald eagle is the eagle that most of us are familiar with. And that is the one we will learn about in this book. There are many verses in the Bible that tell us how majestic and beautiful eagles are. The Bible mentions their strength, swiftness, and their incredible nests. Eagles are designed to be a part of the living world that God created, and we can learn much from them and be amazed at what they can do. We also need to learn how to take care of eagles, just as we do all of God's creation. The bald eagle is not really bald. The beautiful head of white feathers was given the word bald from a Greek word meaning white. Eagles do not get these white feathers until they're four or five years old. When eagles are born, they are covered with small feathers that are gray and soft, called down. These fluffy feathers keep them very warm. As the eagles get older, true feathers develop that are brown and white. When eagles are all grown up, they are called mature eagles. They have white feathers on their heads and tails. Some of these feathers can be 20 inches long. The wings can be 8 feet from wingtip to wingtip. Eagles can fly to heights of 2 miles in just a few minutes, and they can glide at 100 miles per hour. Eagles have a strong bill that can be as long as their heads. The upper half of the bill curves down much more sharply than most birds. They have strong toes with sharp claws called talons. The talons are curved and eagles use them to catch and hold their food. The feet of eagles have non-skid pads on them to help carry food to a place to eat it or to the nest. Have you ever heard of someone being called eagle eye? Eagle eyes are larger and see things six times better than human eyes. A human with good eyesight can see something the size of a marble at about 35 yards. An eagle could see the same thing 200 yards away. Eagles can see a fish or a rabbit from over a mile away. Since eagles eat fish, mice, rats, and other small animals, they are called predators. The animals they catch are called prey. Without predators, we humans would be overrun with mice and rats. The place where eagles live is called a habitat. There are four things eagles must have. Food to eat, water to drink, shelter to hide from danger and bad weather, and space to move around safely and take care of babies. God has created habitat for all of his creatures. Eagles need big, tall trees close to water to build their nests. The four things eagles need are available in such habitat. If pollution kills the fish because the water is not clean and eagles eat the fish, the eagles will die. Even lead sinkers or bullets from guns can poison eagles. It is important that all of us work together to keep the earth the way God created it. In Alaska, eagles feed mainly on salmon that have died after they laid their eggs. The eagle not only cleans up the dead fish, but carries the remains onto the land to fertilize the plants. Eagles make huge nests called eerie. They keep the nest clean by putting new sticks and grass over the old dirty ones. The nests 
can be as big as a car. One nest was found that was 10 feet across, 20 feet deep, and weighed 1,000 pounds. Frequently, nests are so large that a hunter can actually sit in the nest. God made eagles so that they build more than one nest, and they move nearly every year. Eagles feed their babies dead fish, rats, and mice, called carrion. The nest would get very dirty if the eagles stayed there, but by moving, the rain and wind cleans their nests, which are not being used for the next year. The nest the eagles build will frequently become a home for orioles, English sparrows. When eagles mate, they mate for life. The father and mother stay together for as long as 40 years. During courtship, they will fly very high in the air, lock talons, and somersault downward toward the earth. Eagles lay two or three eggs. They are white, but usually get stained brown while in the nest. The eggs are very small, less than three inches long. Parents take turns caring for the eggs for four to six weeks. The babies are covered with down, but in three weeks or so, they get a brown coat. By two months, the baby birds are fully feathered. The eagle has been the national bird of the United States since 1789, when George Washington was president. Its outspread wings stand for its speed and mobility. The shield on the breast stands for the protection given. The arrows in the left foot stand for skill and bravery. The olive branch in the other foot stands for peace. Other countries use eagles in the same way. The Romans in the time of Christ used a golden eagle on the tip of a spear at the head of their legions. The black eagle was an emblem of Prussia, and German, Russian, and Austrian rulers all used eagles as symbols. This is a majestic and awesome bird, but God has placed man over even the eagle, saying, Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. We have a responsibility to take care of all that God has given us and to manage what we have been given wisely.